Hello, everybody. I want to talk about the ultimate context within which life unfolds, physical life, the life that you're within right now. <clears throat> it's within a context, and this context, you might think that that context has to do with just the physical world, or your society, or your civilization, you know, all kinds of things like that. But the the greater context within which your life is unfolding is actually beyond this life. I've thought about this for many years. Um, I've come across it in certain teachings. But to see it so clearly reiterated, and not just reiterated, but expanded upon so clearly in the new message, it has really, really helped me. Really, really get in touch with the greater context and how when you get in touch with the greater context within which your physical life exists it relieves it unburdens the mind so much because the mind you know there are certain questions about existence there are certain things that the intellect can never figure out, that it could never understand, that it could never deduce. Like the New Message says over and over again, it is pure experience when you get to certain spiritual levels. And even as deep as some of those might be, as deep as that could possibly be, it's still limited by the fact that you're alive in a physical form. So even if you did have amazing experiences or like a very deeply integrated life where you understood this greater context and you experienced true happiness, not fake happiness, not just like stimulation, having your senses, you know, stimulated and trying to get satisfaction that way, the deepest satisfaction of understanding this greater context and why you're here. The fullest experience of that still cannot encapsulate your entire being with a capital B. Your small b being, which is you as an individual, the small b being, that, that cannot understand the vastness of creation or the vastness of really the relationships within creation that you are a part of, really. But when the, the, the more you unburden your mind and the more you realize the mind and the intellect cannot crack this, cannot understand this, it's not going to figure it out. It's, you know, it's not there for the mind to use. So the more you unburden the mind and kind of get the mind out of the way progressively, habitually, really through like meditation, then a deeper experience just keeps coming in of the greater context. And it is such a relief. That's the, 
That's like the main thing it offers you, especially in the beginning. Before other things may be coming to you. One of the main things that you're learning, that you're gaining, is relief. A huge relief on your mind that it is so relieved that it doesn't have to figure certain things out. While at the same time, you know, you have an experience of knowing that transcends the intellect, it transcends the mind. Even certain kinds of memories can come to you. These memories, these feelings, these affinities may be totally inexplicable. You don't know why. You don't know, you don't understand. There is no because within the mind concerning this. The only thing you can do is experience it, feel it, trust it, know it. And there's a lot of discernment that comes with this because when I use the word trust, I, I'm hesitant to use that word because a lot of people are trusting everything. They think anything they experience is this deeper experience when it's not. They're confusing things. The New Message talks a lot about this as well. The confusion of levels. People are really confused with what's going on. Say like, people, just because they have psychic experiences does not necessarily mean that that is a spiritual experience. You're just sensitive to the mental environment. You're sensitive to, to certain levels of things taking place. You may even be sensitive to other forms of intelligent life that are trying to give you messages that are trying to win you over. Now, if you don't have any discernment about that, you'll just blindly walk right into it and trust it and think that you're special and that this is spiritual and you're getting messages that, you know, YouTube is filled with people having experiences like this. They think it's spiritual, but it's not necessarily. They're just being overwhelmed it's very sensational. It's about being heavily, heavily stimulated by some outside presence that they're interpreting as something really deep, really profound, really spiritual, when really, when really they are only being overwhelmed. You're being enthralled by something. And like the New Message says this, it's a real fascinating quote from this revelation called uh, Resources, Trade, and Competition in the Greater Community. It's, it talks a lot about the mental environment and how that is the main arena of competition, okay? It's not about arms and physical brute force. It's about persuasion, influence, intelligence, you know, the mental, being able to perceive things. Now, yeah, humanity sort of understands this, but like the new message says, we're at, we're at, we're at a frontier of this kind of knowledge. Um, we're right at the frontier of it. We haven't even explored it that far yet. We know a little bit of it, but we have to <laughs> really cultivate these abilities in order to gain discernment. Otherwise, what? You'll just be taken for a ride, just like an adolescent in a big city. It's their first time there. Everything, you know, they're, they're kind of enthralled with everything. They'll trust anybody. They'll trust any old story, anything that looks like it might be good. There's lures everywhere. They'll walk right into any vendor, so to speak. It's like, hey, come, 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 yes. 
we have big winners here. We have, you know, trying to make you feel special, make you feel like you're a winner, make you feel like, you know, you're chosen and all this. That is exactly how a lot of the races visiting this world right now are behaving. They're taking total advantage of people's spiritual superstitions, expectations, and naivety. They have no idea what they're playing with. They think that just because they're having they're being heavily stimulated, that they're being overwhelmed, that this means that they're special, they're chosen. This sets them apart from everybody else, you know. Sometimes people are being targeted in ways that they don't even know. Sometimes they could think it's an ascended master that's messing with them. Giving them messages and, and, you know, all kinds of weird stuff. They could think it's an ascended master. They could think it's all kinds of things. They could even think it's Jesus. Okay? You got to understand that. There's heavy, heavy, heavy manipulation taking place with these beings. They've attempted it on me. I have a lot of experiences with different kinds of things they've tried on me. Um, I talk about some of that on this channel, but one thing they've tried is uh, th they wanted me, it's so strange, they wanted me to think I was being contacted by an Egyptian deity, but I could tell something was wrong with it. I could, you know, I was, I've been feeling a lot of presences, like this, this was like two and a half years ago or something, and one night there was a very strong presence and it, it was like kind of like trying to link up with my mind and when that kind of thing happens it's almost like you got to just go with it because it's not going to stop they're just going to keep doing it but then suddenly i'm getting visual of like egyptian hieroglyphics and it just kept going and kept going and the presence was trying to convince me that it was some, it's part of this Egyptian pantheon. But I could tell there was something very superficial about it. It was just a veneer. And after about like a half hour of this, the message that it wanted to give me after feeding me all this, you know, kind of convoluted Egyptian hieroglyphs, that didn't make any sense really. Um, it said, we're coming for you. That, that's the message it was really trying to implant in my mind. We're coming for you. Now, here's the thing. It's so funny, man, because the new message and the Allies of Humanity briefings say that these this off-world presence is doing shit like this to people. It's trying to portray itself as Krishna or Buddha or Jesus or anything, anything like Egyptian because I have Egyptian books here. And certain things, certain things I used to upload and, and all that, like, they study people to see what you would be receptive to. And then they start to pr try to pretend to be that deity or that God to get you in a state of receptivity. They want you to be very receptive to their presence so that they can, what, start guiding you in certain ways. Now, some people are like hook, line, and sinker. They are being guided by this presence because they think they're in contact with apostles, with Jesus, with Krishna, with this, with that. They have no idea what they're playing with. After that experience, they stopped, they stopped doing that because they knew that I wasn't falling for it. They tried other things after that usually in the form of dissuasion, trying to make me really disturbed because I'm, I'm outspoken against this presence. So they try to do a lot of nasty stuff, and that's, that's really... That, this, <laughs> the nasty stuff they do, man, you, you got no idea, really. This... This actually is part of the greater context. It's a greater context within the physical domain. 
that the mental is part of. They don't need to like literally physically be right next to you to influence you. All they need to do is focus very intensely. And these beings have crossed certain evolutionary thresholds that we have not crossed yet. Which means they have certain adaptive advantages that we have not cultivated yet. This does not mean they are more spiritual than us. It does not mean they are more advanced than us in any kind of spiritual sense, moral sense, ethical sense. It's not about that. All it means is that they have certain adaptive advantages having crossed certain thresholds into this greater community of intelligent life. Some of these beings have been there for tens of thousands of years. Their genetic stock has. That, that's probably the best way of looking at it. They have abilities within the mental environment in terms of planting ideas, influencing thought. Okay. That is part of the greater context. But there's, al there's also a like a greater, greater context in terms of where you really came from. You didn't come from these beings. That's another ruse they're spinning for people. That's another yarn. That they're your celestial parents. They are your space brothers. You know, that they are the ones who seeded life here, even though they didn't. The new message is very clear about this. They'll say they did, but they did not. They are not the source of humanity's genetic stock necessarily. They are not the parents of humanity. They're not the gods of humanity. They're not angels. They're not demons. They're not saviors. They're nothing. They're opportunists. That's all they are. Opportunists. Taking, taking advantage of a situation. That's all they're doing. And it's so freeing to see it in such a clear way. Okay? <laughs> you can't just be enthralled by it. There's like this, like that new message quote I was going to say uh, from that from that revelation. Um, resources, trade, and competition in the greater community. It talks about, like, yes, the mental environment, but it talks about how when when certain people are contacted by like this and they're totally hooked, they get totally hooked. They think they're special. They think they're chosen. They think they have a, a spiritual message for humanity and this presence. They don't even know what this presence is really. Um, they're overwhelmed, they're enthralled, but they are enslaved at the same time. They are completely enslaved by this presence. Now, you don't want that. That's not something you want. Do you, do you want your mind to be totally enslaved by something that you think is good, but that is really not good? Enter the new age. So much of the New Age is being seeded by this presence in order to disarm your critical faculties, make you really solipsistic, kind of whimsical about existence. You're just waffling on everything. You think it's all relative. It's all just about, you know, indulgence. Life is just a vacation. You don't need to accomplish anything. You don't need to work hard or apply yourself. You just need to indulge. And that's all that is. That's the opposite of true spirituality, man. It's the opposite of true spirituality, true philosophy, anything that's really true. <laughs> this New Age shit and this off-world presence, they are the opposite of that. They are teaching the opposite of all that. They just want you to indulge, to disarm your critical faculties, to think it's all just in your head. Anything that happens... You just have to accept it because it's all just in your head anyway and you manifested it. You attracted it. You attracted it. No matter what happens, you manifested it. It's a spiritual lesson. All this shit. They want you to like think that you, <laughs> you are the ultimate source of everything. So th that no matter what happens, 
it's spiritually mandated by God or something. See, you know, that is the perfect belief system that an intervening race would want the native race to have. They could get away with anything if people enough people believe that. They could get away with anything, man. Anything. The greater context... I mean, we are entering a greater context on multiple levels, okay? There's this greater context of the greater community of intelligent life that we're coming into contact with. Sort of like the bad apples on the block that are taking advantage of a very naive race. But you also have the greater context, the greater spiritual context, that you're not from here. You didn't come from the mud, the primordial mud of this molten planet. That's not where your consciousness came from, okay? <laughs> you come from somewhere else, beyond separation. Like the new message says, Anthony William has been saying this too quite a bit. I mean, I and I look for agreements. Like when Anthony Williams says, you come from beyond the stars. That's your home. That's where you came from. You're from beyond the stars. And when you do stargazing meditations, when you're looking at the stars, try to connect to what's beyond the stars. Not just the stars themselves, but there is something beyond them, beyond the galaxies. That's where you came from. Now, what does that mean? Beyond separation, okay? That's the same way the new message talks about it. Beyond the galaxies, beyond the stars is creation. Where you are right now is separation. That is, now, you can't confuse the stars themselves as your heavenly abode as if that's where you came from, as if your home is on another planet or another star system, or just maybe all the stars are where you came from. Not really. Because people can get kind of whimsical with that, like, oh, we are made of stardust and all that kind of thing. Like, well, the, the, the process, the, the, the physics of the physical universe is not the 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 source of your consciousness it's not even necessarily the genesis of your spiritual reality okay your spiritual reality is beyond that that is the ultimate context and getting in touch with that is so damn important because it, it helps put everything else in the proper context the way i see it an interesting kind of visual a lot of people talk about the circle of life, right? There's a circle of life. And it just goes around, right? Just like how everything goes around. The earth goes around. The earth spins. It also goes around the sun. The sun goes around the galaxy. You know, everything is spinning and turning. The circle of life, right? Even physical life, all beings... They come into existence and they pass out of existence. They come into existence and they pass out of existence. The circle of life. But the way I see it, you can think of it as like the C of life. Not, in, not like an O, not like a zero, not a circle, but like a C. A broken circle. Where you come into time... You come into time and you go around time and you experience it, but then you go back to what? The timeless, the formless, the ultimate context within which you exist. And when you go back there, you know so much more. Every, everything is pulled away from... It's just like coming awake and you realize the greater context within which you enter physical life 
And when you're in that timeless space, you know so much more, you experience so much more, so much more is made known to you. You're not just clouded with because when you're actually in physical existence, boy, man, you're in such an in incredible state of amnesia. And it does take a lot of spiritual practice and understanding to even get to the knowledge, like what the New Message talks about, the knowledge of where you came from, the greater context. It's so important because then your spiritual evolution through these, this process of coming back here over and over again advances quite a bit, quite a bit. And you can get back to God more, you, I guess you could say more quickly. You don't have to tag on another 20 lifetimes to figure, you know, to figure out what's going on because you did something absolutely horrible in this life. Because all those memories, everything you do is kept by your soul. Anthony Williams has been talking about this. The New Message talks about the exact same thing. I used to watch, and sometimes I still do, uh, this great YouTube channel, uh, Anthony, Anthony Shane, C-H-E-N-E. -E. I think that's his last name. Anthony Shane Productions. And what he does is he interviews and makes these little short documentaries about uh, near-death experiencers. And it's always the same, man. It, even though it's really different, yes, everybody has a unique life, but every time, every time they pass, what is it? They, they're shown what they did in their life, everything that was good and everything that was bad. And they're, they, they go through a review period, and it's like they get to see from this greater context, like with everything that took place within their life. And they get to look at it and be like, how good did I do coming in? You know, when you're in time, boy, is it, it, it seems really slow and grueling, you know. But when, you're, when you get back to the timeless, it's like the blink of an eye. You know, you go through this life review and it's just like, yes, you, you can spend a very long time. Some of these people, they could have been dead, clinically dead for... 15 minutes, half hour, maybe. But when they're in this other place, some of them say it felt like they were there for years. Years. And they do all kinds of things. You know, when you have, <clears throat> when you're freed up from physical reality, you're also freed up from the limitations of your intellect. You, Which means you can assimilate things much more quickly. You can see things much more quickly. Things are impacting you much more deeply. You understand things so much more quickly. <laughs> so like when you go through your life review, all kinds of information can come to you in ways that seems to just, just be beyond what your intellect would be capable of understanding. Um... And it is like learning. It's a great learning process to learn, basically, like the new message says, how to get back, to, how to get back to God, so that you don't have to keep coming back here, over and over again. Now. <clears throat> this is the ultimate context. Even people who've done terrible things, they're led through this life review. And that, if you want to call that hell, that would be a hellish. For people who've done very terrible things, to go and experience their life review will be, would be quite a hellish experience because they would have to live through and see very clearly from this greater perspective, from this greater context from their true self, you could say, just how much suffering they caused in this world. <clears throat> and when they come back, which they would definitely have to, uh, they, will, they will be given another chance to, be, to have more of a con contribution, to have more maybe compassion, to give more, you know, 
all that kind of thing, all that learning that has to take place, they're given another chance. They're given another shot. And it might take 50 or 100 lifetimes for some people. Possibly more. I, I, I don't know how all that works. <laughs> you know, some people, the things they've done, it, it might take a really, really long time. And <clears throat> the way the new message talks about it, it might not even be on necessarily this planet either. They could be shipped off, so to speak, somewhere else to try to find another experience that would be more fitting for them. Like, hey, here's a place where you could contribute. You could be of use here. And it fits with your learning necessities, with what you need to learn. There's a lot of planets out there. There's a lot of races out there. There's a lot of opportunities to learn. You don't have to go experience literally all of them. But the fact that, you know, the greater context, that's one greater context. The fact that we are just one out of billions and billions and billions of races that are also going through more or less the same learning process of going through separation trying to understand separation, going through this and getting back to the greater context, going, hmm, from your, from your greater self, from your true self that is not separated from God. And when you get back to that part of yourself, the deeper knowing comes up and you look at separation and you're like, hmm. But it's all about the return, like the new message talks about. You can't return to God unless you've been purified. That's that's a way of thinking about it. When you look at it, when you look at separation from this greater context, you know if you can return or not. You know if you're capable of returning or not. It's just something that is known. You don't think about it necessarily. It's not like a choice that you make. It's something that's just known you're like, oh, I have to go back. I have to not do that in the next lifetime. I have to I have to be more conscientious in the next lifetime. I have to make sure to have compassion in that kind of situation next lifetime. You know, that kind of thing. And but you may have done really good things as well. <clears throat> but this greater context really helps with life especially if you're suffering, if you have any kind of chronic illness, chronic issues, things you're living with. Meditating on this greater context can be a great relief, especially really if you are meditating every day. Like if you are taking steps to knowledge, that can, that can really help. Um, but it's not like, it's not like a form of therapy, okay? Like it's something different. I mean, if you want to take do do therapy, I recommend doing therapy, but this isn't necessarily the same thing. Even though th there's a new message, Revelation, that talks about how this whole process of understanding the new message, learning the new message, learning about creation, separation, taking steps to knowledge, learning about what knowledge is as opposed from just like intellectual knowing, intellectual knowledge the deeper spiritual knowledge, learning all of this can be very therapeutic for some people. For other people, it might fulfill certain other kinds of needs. But it, it's all of that and more. It's all of that and more. It can fulfill a lot of different kinds of things for different kinds of people. For me, I kind of, I always want to get the bigger context, right? The bigger picture and see how it's connected with other things. Like all these near-death experience videos I've seen. There's a great book. Um, it's about that neurosurgeon who had a near-death experience that was really powerful. I forget his name right now. Proof of Heaven by Eben Alexander. That's a really great one. Um... You know, all those kinds of stories that are just so fascinating to me. That 
kind of stuff really helps with understanding the context as well. Because it's in alignment with the new message very, very much. And Anthony William, the medical medium, the things he's teaching spiritually are very much in alignment with this as well. This is not new age mumbo jumbo. Okay. Anthony William, the new message. This stuff is like a hot knife through butter. When you're talking about just the sheer level of new age deceptions that are out there right now. This stuff cuts right through it. It's, you know, it's about real spiritual advancement. Not fake, sensationalist, just new age dumpster fires that are just talking about all kinds of dimensions and Arcturians and name dropping like crazy just to, just to create sensational stuff in your head like when you see new age books that are they're going crazy with the name dropping with different races of beings their histories why they're here and all that the new message doesn't do that the allies of humanity briefings don't do that because it's not necessary all they talk about in terms of this presence is three things motivations objectives, methods. They're not talking about where they come from, what they look like, whether they're Arcturians, Reptilians, this, that, you know. They're not talking about any of that. Their history's nothing. Because why? It's not important. And a lot of that kind of stuff is actually being seeded by, that, by this off-world presence in order to confuse people. To get them all super stimulated and thinking like, oh yeah, I'm in contact with Arcturians and Pleiadians and Syrians and this and that. And that you know, it's just like, bah. okay, there's very, very little real, I, mean, I would even go so far as to say that there is no true spirituality in any of that stuff. It's just about stimulation and stimulating your mind and getting you confused. Because it's just too stimulating. It's just name dropping like crazy. Talking about the 78 dimensions that you're going to ascend through. And weird, vague, new vocabularies that you have to learn. Uh, you know, with, with a lot of these books coming out that are channeled by, you know, Arcturians. And all, you know, like, you just can't trust that stuff, man. Really, really. The Allies of Humanity... The new message, Anthony William, the medical medium, that stuff is fucking on point. Okay? Really, it cuts through the bullshit. And that is so important these days, man. <laughs> really, really. Anyway, I kind of wanted to riff on some of this um, and talk about the importance of the greater context, how there's, there's the greater context within our physical reality of this this greater community of intelligent life that we've always been around we've always been within it but it's just that now we're coming into more contact with it and are becoming more aware of it and we have to be very discerning about all that we can't just be blindly walking into things thinking it's so amazing Ooh, oh wow <laughs> we'll just be taken advantage of so easily doing that but the other greater context of your spiritual reality, your ancient home, what the new message calls your ancient home, that is the ultimate context of why you're here. The ultimate context. It's not about your family. It's about your spiritual family, but it's not about your biological family necessarily. You can love them. You can take care of them. You can have affinity for them. You have work in the world to do. But understanding this greater context really just, whew, it, like the new message talks about so much, that is the ultimate form of guidance when you get in touch with that knowledge. The ultimate form of guidance. It knows what you need to do. It knows who you need to meet. It knows why you're here. You don't know. Just your separated mind, it doesn't know. It's totally in the dark. 
and you can't assume that you're going to figure that out like you're like it's like it's some kind of equation. That's not that's not what the intellect is for. Anyway, wanted to speak on that some.